Hello, welcome to another episode of There I Said It. My name is Aaron Bjork. I'm the lead shepherd and elder of Fellowship of the Cross. And the title of my, uh, of my message here today for you is called Shadows and Cloths. Uh, the peculiarness of actual objects or um, physical manif- uh, manifestations from physical objects uh, in the actual world in which we live that uh, have some type of connection uh, to supernatural power. Uh, that might sound like uh, divination, that might sound like uh, idolatry, that type of thing, but uh, it's not. It's scriptural. Um, and it, it is spiritual. There are spiritual th- connections to physical things, uh, not just people. We see that that's the case in the demonic realm. Uh, we know that uh, evil spirits can tie themselves to objects, not just people. Um, but even look at it in the in the Old Testament. We know that it was the case with objects, uh, with God, with godly things. The Ark of the Covenant, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon it. The uh, the tablets of stone, uh, Moses' staff, when he threw it onto the ground, it became a snake, those types of things. Uh, but also with, uh, in, uh, with um, uh, Janus and Jambres in the throne room of Pharaoh, they threw their staffs on the ground. They became snakes too. It's just that Moses' staff ate their, their staffs. So there is a manifestation physically with the demonic realm as well, spiritual things resting on physical things and so on and so forth. Someday when the sky is rolled back as a scroll and the powers of the heavens are shaken, as it says in the book of Revelation, these things are, their eye, people's eyes are gonna be open to the spiritual realm around them. It says that men's hearts failing them for fear for those things that are coming upon the earth. Uh, that's not just physical, tangible things like rocks from space and stuff like that, but it's also supernatural. So these things are gonna be seen in more regularly. Uh, But when we even go to the book of Acts, there's peculiar things. With the intensity and and presence of the power of the Holy Spirit uh, and the good things that come with it, um, thousands of people coming to Christ in one day and people being healed and resurrected from the dead and people moving in power and not just being saved but also being baptized in the Holy Spirit and receiving their call and their office of the fivefold ministry and going out and planting churches and hundreds of churches according to some extra biblical passages being planted and even hours around the countryside also comes great fear of the Lord that comes with that a certain respect be in awe because of the things that are happening and God's expectations of holiness uh, even though in our physical bodies and our, our physical minds we don't have the ability to measure up in in this life in this physicality to the perfection that God demands uh, someday in a resurrection resurrected body and mind we will there'll be no more sin and we will be perfect in all ways um, it, it God still his presence requires not because there's a law and he's just uh, sitting there checking off boxes, making sure we obey it, but because he, he can't be around sin. And when the Holy Spirit's presence is really, really thick and powerful and strong, so is going to be the holiness. And when there's a lack of holiness, then bad things happen. Just like in the beginning of, a- of Acts chapter 5, we have the death of Ananias and Sapphira because they promised God they would give a certain amount of money and then they only gave him some of that money and the Holy Spirit struck them down dead. Maybe we should uh, be giving a little more in the offering plate uh, to the ministry of the Lord, right? Anyways, that's a side note. There's something that I'm talking about today, shadows and cloths, what's going on? A lot of people think, well, you know, we just have this idea that prayer is like, you know, dear God, give me this and give me that. And and God still heals, but, you know, let's not make it religious or let's not make it uh, strange and weird and uh, but there's a lot of weirdness and strangeness when the Holy Spirit power is present in intensity. Uh, specifically, let's look at this. Um, Acts chapter 5, verses uh, 15 and 16, uh, actually beginning uh, in verse 12. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place among the people, so that there, so they were all with one accord in Solomon's portico. The portico is on the outside around the temple and those types of things. The porticos of the temple, little halls where they would actually uh, teach and the disciples would make disciples, the the, uh, um, rabbis would make disciples and talk in the temple and teach and those types of things. Many miracles and signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are physical manifestations and physical things of spiritual things connected to them. And then it goes on to talk a little bit more specifically about some of those things. Um, but uh, none of the rest dared to associate with these 
uh, believers in these apostles. However, the people held them in high esteem. And all the more believers in the Lord, multitudes of men and women, were constantly added to their number. Uh, remember, it says at the end of Mark, uh, chapter 16, these signs will follow those who believe. They will pick up deadly serpents. They will not harm them. They will drink deadly poison. It will not harm them. Uh, they will cast uh, demons out. They will heal the sick, uh, raise the dead, um, those types of things. So these things were happening in regularity because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, do we believe in that today? Do we believe that uh, those types of things can take place. Well, you know, remember, it's your faith that makes you well, not Jesus actually being there. Jesus said that almost every time when he healed people. So if you don't have faith uh, that in this type of stuff, well, then it's, it's not the thing that saves you or the object or the manifestation in some physical way. It's, your, it's the faith that God's going to do it, right? Sometimes God just used physical interaction to, uh, to trigger your faith. But your faith is either strong or not. So we should be praying that our faith is, it grows strong. Uh, to the extent, now look at this, verse 15. Uh, a number was added uh, uh, constantly, huge amounts, to the church. To such an extent that they even carried the sick out into the streets. Now, here's the thing. Um, this passage is being said here. It's talking about the vast numbers of people that were coming to the Lord in such regularity and in such intensity that there just were simply not enough uh, 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 believers that had grown into maturity and be able to teach to reach all these people. I mean, I mean, I mean you're talking about tens of thousands of people coming to the Lord. Well, you know, Peter, James, John, they, they can't go lay hands and, and pray and, and talk with 10,000 people. It's just, it's just not going to be possible, especially not with the infrastructure of the cities at the time and the way it would, it just wouldn't be possible. And then they would have to have all these people gather in one place. And you got to remember the, the Roman government and the Jewish uh, um, Sanhedrin, they were after the disciples. So a lot of this had to be done in secrecy. You know, they had to meet and play, you know, they, the igthus on the cave walls, they would draw one section of it and then someone else would come back and draw the other section, know that that could be a safe place to meet in the catacombs and things like that. So they had to be very careful. They couldn't just gather 10,000 people in the outside of a city. They didn't really do that all the time. So there was a need for what I'm going to read here. To such an extent that they even carried the sick out into the streets and they laid them on cots and pallets so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on any one of them. And the people from the cities and the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together, bringing people who were sick and afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. They didn't all necessarily had hands laid on them, but, they, but Peter just walks by, his shadow touches them, and they get healed because of the presence of God was so thick. I'll make a reference to a cloth. It says that uh, the apostle Paul, he couldn't get to someone, and they, uh, someone needed to be healed. And so Paul prayed over a handkerchief. He hands it to his workers. They go and take the handkerchief to the person who's sick. They lay it on the person who's sick, and he's healed. And the power transferred onto the handkerchief and then onto the person that's healed. You might say, well, that's crazy. Well, first off, that means you have to deny the scripture. But secondly, what about Jesus? Jesus is walking through the crowd. And the woman says, what? If only I could touch the hem of his garment. There's even song about that. And she reaches out and touches his garment. He didn't see her. He's surrounded by hundreds of people walking through the street, and then he's immediately he feels it. He says, who touched me? For I felt power come out. He felt power, it says, come out of him. That is a very obvious and clear identification of something metaphysical going on in, a multiple, in, the, in the multiple dimensionality of the universe that Jesus Christ had full mastery over, the mastery of all the dimensions of, of time and space. And this power that he had, this supernatural power of God that he had in him, the woman touched his garment and power came out of him. So it's not just like believing in Santa Claus, maybe he's real and then we get our present. 
There's also some things with the Lord that are uh, strange and weird and a connection to the physical, the spiritual connected to the physical. It is a very real thing. The spiritual power of God, the supernatural power of God is not just some mystical thing that we can't see. Uh, it, the only reason we can't see it, or just because we can't see it, doesn't mean that it's not real tangible, and even somehow physical in a different dimension. And I believe someday when we get to heaven and we see all dimensions, we're going to see the physical representations of these supernatural occurrences that take place in the lives of believers. Amen? All right. So hopefully that encourages you and gives you something to put your hands on when it comes to our faith, because it is very real. I encourage you to pray that the Holy Spirit comes in your life and in the life of your church so that maybe we can even see in our day, and I believe we will, uh, these things even begin to take place before the Lord returns. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.